Back live at the Pontiac Silverdome, Rick Berkey here, and we're just about to start the Class B State Championship game. Earlier today, Schoolcraft won the Class D crown, 42-7 over Frankfurt. Traverse City won the A crown. DePoris of St. Martin won the Class C crown. Gentlemen, the B game between uh, Farmington Hills, Harrison, St. Joe's, just about to go. Is there any intangibles you look for? Well, we've got a couple of silly stats we can give you, Rick, and Bill and I feel differently about this game anyway, so we'll take them from that side. I like St. Joe in this football game, and I give you one silly stat in their favor, and that is that uh, as we head into game number four here at the Silver Dome, the home side of the Dome has won the first three ball games. St. Joe on the home side here for game four. Well, I like the Harrison Hawks in this uh, final game today, and uh, one of my intangible reasons are they're a distant cousin of the Eagles, and the Eagles have won two ball games so far today in the Silver Dome. So I'm going with those mean Hawks. All right, I think none of those are going to make any difference at all. We head into the uh, class. B final, St. Joe and Farmington Harrison, and back with the play-by-play, -play, John Tomlinson. Mark, thank you very much. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. The final of four here today on Championship Saturday at the Pontiac Silverdome. A great show put on by the Michigan High School Athletic Association and all associated with it. We're just about ready for the opening kickoff. The maize and blue pairs of St. Joe will be receiving from the Farmington Hills Harrison Hawks. And here we go, we're underway. High end over end kick. Coming down, taken at the three yard line, up to the five, the 10, the 15, and dropped at the 18 yard line. And that's where the maize and blue bears will take it over on the first possession today. Dale Katz and Jason Litzman on the tackle for the special teams of the Harrison Hawks. Harrison Hawks in white jerseys, yellow pants, and yellow helmets. The dark blue jerseys, yellow pants, and dark blue helmets of the maize and blue St. Joe Bears. Wide to the right side, Jeff Barney. Wide to the left side, Ken Ruppel. Quarterback under center with an eye formation. Hands off, second man through the hole. Little or no running room. Up to the 21-yard line, Scott Hurley, the ball carrier. Carl Schumacher is the uh, tackler on that play. John, you can look for that all day long. St. Joe loves to run right. They got some big horses on the right-hand side. Cole, Baginski, Robinson, and Fredrickson average about 230 pounds over there. And Fechner and Hurley, very hard running backs. That's what Ike Mullenkamp wants to do. And he wants to get, a lot, obviously, a little more than one yard every time he carries it there. Jeremy Larson split wide to the right side. Two tight ends in a balanced line. High formation in the backfield. Here's the snap. Option right. Now it's a pass over the center. Complete. Number 82 hauling it in. Rob Fredrickson, the big tight end. Good yardage out across the 30-35 to the 37-yard line. Gain of 15 yards on the play. Press Gove on the tackle defensively. But a first down. And it looked like the option was just a little pop pass over the center to the tight end going straight down the field. And it got him 15 and a first down. Well, Rob Fredrickson, uh, an all-state defensive player, two years in a row, the first year at a back, the second year at a linebacker, and that's where he get most, gets most of his headlines. But he's also an excellent receiver. That's his 13th catch for the year. Wide receivers, either side of the field, eye formation, Eden Sanders, the quarterback, calling signal. Back to pass, looking downfield, Cox his arm, throws it out in the flat, it's complete again to Fredrickson. He's at the 45, the 50, and down to the 45-yard line. Gain of about 16 on that one. Chad Burgess on the coverage. Bill and I uh, have an all-star team for all of West Michigan, and Rob Fredrickson was a member last year, and this is a great young kid. He's the fastest player on this St. Joe team, despite being 6'4 and 220. Runs a 4'5'40. He is Big Ten material. 18 yards on that one, and it gets him just inside the 44 or 45-yard line at the 44. Two tight ends in a balanced line. High formation in the backfield. Quarterback Sanders up under center calling signals. Opening drive of the championship Class B game for the St. Joe Bears. Here's a snap. Handoff. Second man through. The big running back. 6'2", 183-pounder. Scott Hurley, the ball carrier, gets it down around the 40-yard line before Kyle Schumacher and Jason Litchman, along with Jason Buchanan, bring the ball carrier down. Gain of about four at second and six, just outside the 40 at the 41. And another good contrast here of quarterbacks. Ebon Sanders, a junior, also uh, in this ball game, uh, matching the uh, Harrison quarterback, of course, uh, Mills. And the uh, interesting thing is that Sanders is quite an athlete himself. Here's the snap. 
Back to pass Sanders, rolling to the right side, looking downfield, can't find anybody. Now he's going to run with it, gets away from one man at the 40. Out of bounds inside the 35, and it'll be first down yardage. They'll spot it at about the 33 or 34 yard line. Running him out of bounds, there was Dale Katz and Jason Litchman. Yvonne Sanders, beautiful run that time, knew right where the first down sticks were and managed to dive out of bounds just before taking a big hit after picking up the first down. First and 10 again, their third consecutive one as the Bears are on the move. They send Jeremy Larson wide to the right side. Everybody else in tight with two tight ends and a balanced line. I formation in the backfield. Early deep and Fetchner close. Here's the snap, handoff early, second man through, right side of the line, gets it down to around the 30-yard line, pick up a four, maybe five yards on the play, stacked up in there by Matt Sperry and Chad Burgess. Got to like the game plan from Mike Mullenkamp so far. We've seen him throw the ball. We've seen him take it around the end. We've seen the quarterback option, and we've seen him go up the middle. Nice play calling, and they've mixed it up well. And something I think he's going to have to do against this excellent defense. Harrison gets an awful lot of credit offensively, but their defense uh, holding uh, teams to just uh, 4.5 points a game, so they're also very uh, stingy out there. High formation, man in motion this way. Ebon Sanders calling the signals. Stepping back, handing off to Hurley, going off the right side again, gets inside the 30, down to around the 28-yard line. St. Joseph moving from our right to our left. Started this series of downs and has now moved all the way down into the opponent's territory at the 29-yard line. Well, one of the best ways to defense a high-powered offensive team is just to keep that offense off the field. And St. Joe's doing that right now, controlling the football and keeping that Harrison Hawk offense on the sideline. Third down, about four or five yards for the first down. Sanders calling signals. Here's the pitch back. Going back to Hurley. Hurley is met right at, in fact, behind the line of scrimmage by Carl Schumacher in a good, solid tackle. Well, Jason Buchanan also in there uh, on the stop, got an ankle. Buchanan coming from uh, his down line position, I believe at the nose uh, in this ball game. Those gentlemen up front will move around a little bit and we have to kind of keep our eye on them. But to begin with, Jason Buchanan is lining up at the nose. He's number 46, a senior, 5'6", 166 pounds and very, very quick. Fourth and five, St. Joe is going for it. They're at the 31 yard line. They need to get inside the 25. Rolling to the right side, Sanders looking downfield, throws it up, it's intercepted at the 20, back to the 25, the 30-yard line. Hauling that one in was Brian Waldron, the 6'2 senior from the cornerback position and an ill-advised pass for Yvonne Sanders there. He was being pressured and just let it go. It was intercepted. All will go over to Harrison Hawks. Well, Brian Waldron, one of the excellent defensive backs for the uh, Hawks of Harrison. I have him for nine interceptions coming into this one, so that makes number 10. Uh, he's a talented defensive back. Reads the quarterback very well. Miller Coleman, the junior quarterback, brings him to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers, one in motion. Calls the signals now. Here's the snap. Back to pass, rolling the right side, looking downfield. Cox his arm. Throws a long one, he's got his man beat. It's at the 20, the 15, the 10, five, touchdown. First play from scrimmage goes all the way. 70 yards from Millard Coleman to Brian Waldron, the 6'2", 165-pound senior, the man that just intercepted the pass, now catches his own for a 70-yard touchdown from Millard Coleman. Well, what a catch by uh, Brian Waldron. He had 44 receptions, 13 touchdowns coming into this ball game. He makes the interception, turns right around and catches the long TD pass from uh, Millard Coleman. And the uh, Hawks get on the scoreboard immediately. Their first possession, their first play, six points. Extra point is kicked, it's up, and it is good. Clock is stopped, 6.30 remaining in the first period of play. We have the Harrison Hawks on top right now. 7 to nothing over the Bears. And we'll remind you that Denny's is one of our sponsors on this, the Michigan High School Athletic Association Championship Football Network. St. Joe Bears with the football. 
Sanders hands it off straight up the middle. First man through. The ball carrier, number 23, Todd Fetchner, the senior fullback. Little or no gain on the play. Scott Nichols is there, as is Jeff Skinner. And boy, the crowd is still buzzing after that 70-yard touchdown pass from the first play from scrimmage for the Farmington Hills Harrison Hawks. They break the huddle now. Phil Cole out over the football. Rail and Bansky are the guards. Robinson and Cronin are the tackles. Two tight ends, the balance line, eye formation in the backfield. Here's the snap. Handoff going to the right side. It's an option, and Sanders fools everybody. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and out of bounds. Ebon Sanders, Brian Waldron, finally runs him out of bounds. But what a great job of making that time as he just throws that defense. Well, Ebon Sanders, after watching Mill Coleman, his counterpart at quarterback, throw the big, long touchdown pass, says, I can do some things of my own. And Ebon Sanders makes the great fake into the line, turns it upfield, and a super run. You're right, from up here, we couldn't tell what was going on, and it was obvious down on the field. None of the kids knew what was going on either. 32 yards on the play, just short of the midfield stripe. First and 10 for the St. Joe Bears. Sanders calling signals, here's a snap, back to pass, throws it up over the middle, incomplete. That little pop pass again, intended for Rob Fredrickson, the big tight end, but it does fall incomplete. We'll bring up second down and 10. Once again, we're just underway here in Class B championship action, and the Farmington Hills Harrison Hucks on top, seven to nothing on a 70-yard pass play that uh, was their first play from scrimmage. Well, the Bears uh, able to move the ball offensively. They got shut down by way of the interception on their first uh, possession. And, of course, the Hawks turned right around and put six points on the board by way of that uh, long pass. And then the extra point made it seven. But the Bears able to move the ball so far. Sanders calls the signal. Here's a snap. Option left. Pitch back coming to Hurley. Hurley is met solid over there by Rob McDonald. Doing a good job. Also, Brian Waldron coming up on the tackle as well. Well, I think the old defensive coach up here, Bill Brandell, had to love that as every part of the option was covered. Well, the dive man was hit first. The quarterback was attacked very aggressively by the defensive end, and the pitch man had nowhere to go as the cornerback came up uh, and kept him contained. And just great defense, Mark. You called it right on the head. I love it. Just the way you draw it out on paper, isn't it? Amen. Two wide receivers, either side of the field. Eye formation in the backfield. Third down, about 11 to go for the first down. Sanders back to pass. Good protection. Cox his arm. Throws one out in the flat. It's caught and out of bounds. Good reception that time by Ken Ruppel. As he pulls it in and out of bounds. First down yardage inside the 40 at the 38. Well, Ebon Sanders delivers the difficult pass there, squeezing it in between the defensive back and the sideline there as Ken Ruppel able to stretch to the limit, pull that one in and keep his feet in bounds and puts the Bears on the 38-yard uh, line of the uh, Harrison Hawks. As they did on their first possession, St. Joseph moving the football. They came up empty the first time. Sanders now scrambling to the right side, still on his feet, looking downfield, throws it up. It's complete over the middle to Ken Ruppel again. 6'3", 173 senior. Jason Litchman and Scott Nichols right there to bring him down. And of course, Ebon Sanders has some pretty big targets to throw to his bookends. Fredrickson is 6'4", the tight end, and the split end, Ruppel is 6'3". And both of them have very soft hands, very good receivers. Gain of about eight yards on the play, maybe seven. We'll call it second and three. Inside the 35 at the 32-yard line, they break the huddle. Phil Cole out over the football. Rail, McGinsky are the guards. Robinson and Conan are the tackles. Two tight ends. Man in motion coming this way as Ebon calls the signal. Heading off second man through Hurley. Fumbles the football, and I believe they'll give it. They will. Brian Waldron, his second turnover, and about at the same spot on the field. As St. Joseph drove before, the interception was thrown. Brian Waldron came up with it. This time, Scott Hurley fumbles it. Who comes up with it? Brian Waldron. We'll, we'll see if he can catch another 70-yard touchdown pass. Well, Ebon Sanders and Scott Hurley just not meshing on the handoff as Hurley really never got it and was hit at the same time. And it scooted for quite a long ways into the defensive backfield where Waldron was able to pick it up. Harrison with the football now, leading 7 up in their own territory. Handoff. Right side, a little bit of running room for Matt Conley, I believe, the ball carrier. Tackled defensively in there by Mike Fetty and Bruce Motigel. 
Well, nobody's going to make a whole lot of money running the football against St. Joe, and I'm sure that uh, John Harrington doesn't plan on doing that much either. But that's just a play to keep St. Joe honest out there. Run the football every now and then so they don't tee off and come charging in on Neil Coleman. Burgess goes wide to the left side. Tim Horton in the slot left. Millard Coleman up under center calling signals. Back to pass looking now he's going to run with it gets away from one man still on his feet out across the 30 to about the 34 yard line picked up only a couple on the play. Marty Bingaman in on the stop along with Brian Richards defensively and that will bring up a third and sixth situation. And an example there uh, as John Harrington said in our pregame show uh, Millard Coleman just has a great awareness of the whole field. He was uh, attempting to pass and rolled out there and just knew right away that there was no receiver going to break open. Kept the ball himself and uh, moved it upfield for a few yard gain. Burgess wide left Horton wide right tight end is on the right side split backs in the backfield Coleman back to pass looking up over the middle throws it up and it is incomplete overthrown intended for number 82 out there Jason Lichman coming from the tight end slot and that will bring up a fourth down hunting situation. And that brings a nice uh, reaction from this uh, large St. Joe crowd that's right in front of us as defensively their Bears uh, have done the job against these uh, very, very potent Hawks from Farmington Hills Harrison. Back deep to receive this one. Dan Justice will be punting it. He'll be standing at about his own 20 yard line. Here's the snap a high one. He gets a hold of it though gets the kick away. Fair catch is called for and made. And a good job in there by Ken Rupel, number 86. The end got back quickly and brought it down. Pretty good field position at the 36 yard line. The punt covered 32 yards, and that's where the St. Joe Bears will take it over. Well, the Bears now on their third uh, offensive possession. Stopped by way of the interception the first time they had the ball after moving it pretty well. Stopped the second time by way of the fumble having moved it pretty well. And uh, we've already said they seem to be able to move the ball but they have just been stopping themselves by way of the turnover. Varney wide to the right side. I formation with two tight ends. Sanders back to pass. Cox is on. Throws up wide open. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Ken Rupel, number 86, the big senior split end, 64 yards on the touchdown pass, and Rupel was wide open. Well, I'm not sure what that pattern was offensively, but uh, a young man could not have been more open here in the Silverdome. I don't think there's a place on the field where you could have been farther away from a Harrison Hawk defender, and Rupel made no doubt about it as he brought the pass in from Ebon Sanders and legged his way on into the end zone. On to attempt the kick after now. Bad snap, they pick it up, fumble the football, and it cannot be advanced. So the extra point will go for not with 140 remaining. It's a seven to six ball game, and I think that one got away from the holder just a little bit and uh, fell to the ground and obviously unable to kick it. Want to remind you folks listening in today, wherever you may be, that if you'd like to have a, a special memory of this championship Saturday, whether it's the Class B game or any one of the others, you can order your own video tape, including the play-by-play -play action and all the colorful pageantry of that particular game. It's being promoted and sold by the Michigan High School Athletic Association. For only $33.65, you can send your check or money order to Football Final States, Pontiac Silverdome, 1200 Featherstone Road, Pontiac, Michigan, 48057. A good way to support a good organization. Get your Michigan High School Athletic Association videotape of your favorite championship game here today. Well, we've had two big plays so far in this ball game. A 70 yard touchdown pass for Farmington Hills and then a 64 yard touchdown pass for St. Joseph as almost not at this score had the extra point been good but it remains 7 6 Farmington Hills on top. Well a little problem with the snap on that uh, extra point try and that's not like 
the St. Joe Bears. They don't make mistakes. They usually do not beat themselves. And we've seen them uh, give the ball away twice by way of the turnover. And now a little difficulty with a snap on an extra point. And they still are right in this ball game. So uh, call it three mistakes if you want to. But the uh, Bears, a team that uh, just uh, has been very, very difficult to beat and uh, usually very steady under the direction of Ike Mullenkamp. Burgess and Litchman back deep to receive it. Krutenberg about ready to kick it off. And here we go. It's a squipper coming down, taking at the 14, the 15, the 20. Out to the 25, the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. One man to beat. 40, 35, 30, and driven out of bounds from behind. Coming up, and a flag on the play. Brian Kubicki caught him from behind to save the touchdown. And a fine run back there by the Farmington Hills ball carrier, but a flag way back downfield, and I believe it's going to come all the way back up. Well, Freudenberg's uh, kick is just the kind, really, that you don't want from your kickoff man. It was a hard kick, but it was not very high, and it was directly into the uh, arms of a receiver. And when that happens, your defenders, as they come downfield, really have very little chance to get into position. And that time, the Hawks took advantage of it as they turned it to the opposite side sidelines and turned it up. But as happens in many, many instances on kick returns, there's a clip involved, and that brings it all the way back. So a sparkling run is nullified, and the Hawks will start deep in their own end of the field. Jason Litzman was the ball carrier, but again, the clip brings it all the way back. They'll spot it inside the 15 at the 13-yard line, and that's where the Hawks will take it first and 10. Third possession of the ball game for Farmington Hills. First one, a 70-yard touchdown pass. The second one, a punt. Eye formation to the backfield. Man in motion. Steve Hill coming this way. Millard Coleman calls the signal. Rolling to the right side. Going to keep it. Gets across the 15. He's at the 20 and dropped right there. Gain of about six or seven yards on the play. The quarterback keeper almost a student body right. Well, and the play was made by Rob Fredrickson over there, number 82. He did not make the tackle. But Rob Fredrickson dove into the pile and took out the two lead blockers in front of uh, Mill Coleman, and that left Mill Coleman out there running by himself, nobody in front, and allowed his Bear teammates to make the stop and avoid what could have been a really big, big play. Second down, three yards to go. Farmington Hills in their own territory at the 20-yard line. Power eye formation left. Two tight ends and a balanced line. Coleman calling signals. Here's the snap. Hands off. Second man through. Matt Conley, the ball carrier, gets out across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Tripped up in there, but gets the first down. So Farmington Hills working the ground right now. Not gone to the air yet in this series, but obviously we know that they can. Well, as the Bear defense lines up, we notice that Rob Fredrickson, their all-state linebacker, goes to the power side of the formation. And I think Harrison will try to run away from him. Two tight ends once again. Power eye to the right. Coleman back to pass. Now he's going to roll. Looking downfield. He'll throw up a long one. Intended for his big tight end. It's caught the 30 to 25, 20. And another touchdown will go to Brian Waldron. His second of the afternoon or evening. And that time, he had about a step and a half on the defender. 72 yards on that one. So it's been a 70-yard touchdown pass to Brian Waldron and now a 72-yard touchdown pass to Brian Waldron. And Miller Coleman did an excellent job of laying that football softly over the two defenders and allowing Brian to outrun them to the goal line. Well, the main defender back there was Tom Thorne, and uh, he was really step for step with Brian Waldron, but Waldron put a little move on him and spun him around, and Tom Thorne ended up falling down, which uh, brought Waldron open. He was able to make the grab take it into the end zone. Steve Hill on to attempt the extra point. It's up and it is good. So with only seven seconds remaining here in the first period of play, the Farmington Hills Harrison Hawks have lived up to their offensive reputation and put two big scoring plays on the board. Well, the Hawks of uh, Harrison hold the uh, team and the individual record for passing yardage in a state championship final. It's 208 yards by Ken Kish 
back in 1982, and I have a feeling that Ken's going to watch his record disappear tonight. Well, there's at least 140 up there now, 142 to be exact, and both resulting in touchdowns. Well, and Ebon Sanders is very near 100, 100 plus yards here in the first quarter as well. Explosive offensive contest thus far. Who knows what holds in store for the rest of this game? Boy, it's been a great day of football. Schoolcraft beats Frankfurt 42-7 in the opener. Traverse City over Detroit Catholic Central 24-14 in game two. DePores beats Ravenna 22-14. And this one shaping up to be a super football game. Steve Hill's got it teed up. Three deep men back for St. Joseph, ready to receive this kickoff. Good sized crowd on hand. We had 25,440 in the morning session. Yet to get the official count for this evening. The record on championship day around 53,000. I don't think it'll be broken today. Here's Hill's kick high and over end. Way back coming down. Take it inside the end zone. They'll bring it out. And they say touchback. Automatic touchback in high school. Once the uh, ball crosses the goal line in high school football, it's uh, dead right there, and it's a touchdown. You do not have the option to run it out. Rick Berkey just pointed out to me that not only does Farmington Hills Harrison have the uh, passing yardage record, they also have the receiving yardage record by a guy I like a great deal, and I think Bill probably doesn't like a whole lot at all, and that's Mr. Miller, John Miller, who's uh, up at Michigan State University playing uh, on the defense. You're right. I don't like him at all. He intercepted, I think, four passes a year ago against my amazing blue. Ooh. Well, now you're set next to a Spartan. You better be careful here. We get something going right away. Hand off right side. Being from Lansing and all, I had to give up my amazing blue bumper sticker. That's the end of the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. The score, Farmington Hills 14, St. Joseph 6. We'll be back in a moment on the MHSAA Championship Football Network. Second and five. Sanders' pass was complete to number 82, Rob Fredrickson. The tackle was made by number 89, Chad Burgess. Jeremy Larson wide left everybody else in tight two tight ends in an eye formation option left hand off the first man through right up the middle little or no running room at all for Todd Beckner as he is stopped immediately by a host of white jerseys led by Joe Hanawa. Virtually every play St. Joe is running is off that exact same look. It's off the fake on the dive, and it's off Sanders following down the line. He has a tailback trailing behind him. He can pitch to excellent offense. This time they spread it out just a little bit. Ken Ruppel goes wide to the left side. Jeff Barney comes wide right. Tight end is on the right. Eye formation in the backfield. Fechner close and Hurley deep. Here's the snap. Back to pass Coleman looking over the middle. Got a man open. Throws it up high and overthrown. Ken Ruppel had a step that time on Brian Waldron, but the pass was just a little bit overthrown. It'll bring up a third and nine situation for St. Joseph in their own territory at the 45-yard line. Well, Rob Fredrickson that time was held up at the line of scrimmage, and uh, Yvonne Sanders pumped fake to him once Fredrickson got open and then wanted to go to the other side out there towards uh, the uh, wide receiver going deep. And uh, that's kind of a mirror pass play to that uh, quick little pop pass that has been so effective. High formation, wide receivers either side of the field, tight end is on the right side. Coleman back, or Sanders rather, back to pass, looking around, trying to run it up the middle, now throws it up, incomplete. Gutsy pass right there, tried to force it between two defenders, intended out there for Rob Fredrickson, but it will bring up a fourth down situation, and St. Joseph will have to punt it away. 10-31 remaining in the first half of play. 
Farmington Hills on top 14-6 over St. Joe. We've had some big time pass plays thus far in the game. Gary Layton to punt it away standing at about his own 33 yard line. Here's the snap a low one but he gets it away. Oh, oh. High spiraling kick for a low snap. He really pounded that one. Fair catch called for and made by Jason Litchman back on the 20 yard and that's where Farmington Hills will take it over. And Gary Layton gets a lot of credit on that play. Not only did he make the big punt, but you're right, very low snap, and that one skipped on the turf into his hands. Good job under pressure. Well, the punt extremely high as well as long, and the coverage able to get down and force the receivers down there to fair catch the ball, and that makes the Hawks start right at their 20-yard line. Gary Layton averaging 43 yards on his punts for the season. Chad Burgess comes wide to the left side. Wide to the right side, Steve Hill. Quarterback Miller Coleman up under center calling signals. Man in motion, Hill coming this way. Here's the snap, rolling to the right side, short side of the field, going to carry it himself. He gets it out across the 25 at about the 26-yard line. Gain of about five yards on the play for Coleman. Tackled in there by a host of Maze and Blue Bears. I think Mark hit it earlier. It seems as though uh, Millard Coleman just runs the ball every once in a while just to uh, tread water or so to keep <laughs> people uh, honest or something like that. But uh, boy, oh boy, what an offense these Hawks have got. I think it's because you're supposed to. Schumacher leads him out over the football. Eye formation in the backfield. Coleman calls the signals now on second and six. Here's the snap. Hand off, second man through, a little bit of running room out towards the 30 yard line and fights his way across the 30 to the 31. And he's going to be very close, if not getting the first down. Good job of running, getting the last four yards on his own by Matt Conley, the junior. Yeah, that was an excellent run by Matt Conley there as he was hit three, four yards short of the sticks and managed to spin once and kept the legs moving and finally used the good lean and fell forward. And he picked up a lot of yards on his own right there. They're going to measure to see if he did in fact get enough for the first down. Our vantage point says that he did. Their vantage point says that he did too. So it's first and 10 for Farmington Hills. Harrison Hawks trailing in this contest right now, or rather leading in this contest, 14 to six. I suppose if you're running back at Harrison, you better make the most out of every opportunity. You don't get all that many carries. Their second first down of the evening. And this, the Class B state championship game, the final game of the day and there's been four of them real good ones all day long Millard Coleman shouting up and down the line possibly audibleizing here changing the play at the line of scrimmage back to pass a quick one out of the flat complete to Chud Burgess Burgess gets it and holds it right there gain of about five yards right there with him Ken Rupel did not allow him to go anywhere Burgess tried to put a little shake and bake on him but uh, to no avail and he stayed right there and John, that's going to be a setup play. As down the road, we're going to see Chad Burgess do the same thing, go three or four steps, turn around, and Mill Coleman's going to pump fake once. The defensive back's going to come up, and he's going to be gone. We'll wait for that, oh great predictor. I haven't, I haven't got one right all night. <laughs> Instead of the next play, I've moved on to sometime tonight. They'll do this. Wide receivers either side of the field. Farmington Hills with the football. Coleman rolling to the right side, throws it up incomplete. A little bit underthrown, intended for Timmy Horton out there. And just a little bit uh, behind him and short. And it'll bring up a third and five situation now. Farmington Hills in their own territory at the 35 yard line, leading 14 6 with 8 16 remaining in this first half of play. Class B state championship action from the Pontiac Silverdome. Well, let's see if the Bears put a little uh, different defense, a little stunt action on here or a blitz of some kind and see if they can put a little pressure on uh, Milk Coleman, who will go to the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the right side of the field. Shotgun, nobody back there to block with him. Rolls to the right side, looking downfield. Almost tackled, throws it up. It's intercepted at midfield. Pulling it in, a big interception for Mike Betty, the 170-pound junior. Hauls it in. And that brings the St. Joseph down to their feet. Well, and Bill, I think, hit it right on the head just before the play. It was time for St. Joe to try and get some kind of pressure on Mill Coleman. They did, and forced Coleman to make the bad throw. 
I've been surprised, in fact, to this point that we haven't seen more pressure because in the pregame show, Ike Mullenkamp talked about wanting to stop Mill Coleman from just going back, setting up, and picking him apart. That's really the first time they've chased him around. And he was very, very fortunate in a good athletic move to get away from that tackle. But then the ill-advised pass, and of course the interception, and it's first and ten for St. Joseph. Back to pass. Sanders, Ebon looking. Under pressure now. Going to run with it. Got a little room to the outside. Back to the line of scrimmage and a couple yards more, and that's about it. Ebon Sanders, the junior quarterback, already thrown for well over 100 yards, brought down in there defensively by Dale Katz. Dale Katz from his defensive end position that time had to fight off about three blockers in order to catch up with Ebon Sanders who was weaving his way uh, back through the line of scrimmage after uh, being uh, trapped in the backfield there a little bit. Two tight ends in a balance line eye formation in the backfield. Jeremy Larson comes wide to the right side. Fechner close and Hurley deep. Option right. Sanders is going to keep it. He's still on his feet at the 40 down to the 35 yard line first down yardage. He had Hurley trailing him, but I'll tell you one thing, Ebon Sanders is a gutsy little runner, and he has got some real quick feet. Well, Ebon Sanders running the option that time, coming right at us, and had his pitch back back there, faked the pitch to him, which you don't see a junior quarterback do very often, but he faked the pitch, turned up inside, and picked up some great yardage. First and 10, St. Joseph at the 35-yard line of Farmington Hill. St. Joseph looking to get back even here, trailing 14-6. Ebon Sanders looks over the defense. Here's the snap back to pass. All the time in the world to throw it. Looks up, and it is incomplete intended over there for Rod Fredrickson, but you got to give Cronin, Rail, Cole, Baginski, and Robinson that offensive line a lot of credit there. They gave him all day to throw that ball. Well, he had all day. You are right. He stood back, I think, and looked at about three different receivers until he finally picked out uh, his big tight end, Rob Fredrickson, who was coming across the uh, middle and had gone all the way across the field before uh, Sanders delivered the ball. And uh, good coverage that time defensively as Fredrickson had a defensive back right on top of him and I didn't catch who it was. Ryan Waldron on the coverage and it had to be great coverage I guess because there's no flag on the field. Ruppel wide left coming to the right side Jeremy Larson eye formation in the backfield this time Sanders hands off straight up the middle. Fechner the ball carrier or was it Hurley Hurley the second man through following Fechner and he gets a couple across the 35 down to around the 32 33 yard line going to bring up about a third and seven situation for St. Joseph getting pretty close to being in four down territory and all of a sudden it's uh, Ike Mullenkamp and St. Joe that's running every now and then just to break up the pass plays <coughs> two wide receivers either side of the field eye formation in the backfield Ebon Sanders calling the signals on third down here's the snap straight back to pass rolling to his left side looking downfield Got a man short, can't hit him. Rob Fredrickson was wide open that time. And I'll tell you, Ebon Sanders holding his head down with good reason. He knows he had his tight end open and just couldn't get him the ball. Well, Ebon Sanders running very hard and very fast to his uh, offensive left that time and trying to uh, hit Rob Fredrickson, also running in that same direction, and they just could not connect. Very difficult pass for a quarterback to throw to moving hard to your left when you're right handed. Uh, he threw the pass well in terms of it being spiral and on a line and all of that. It was just too far out in front of the attentive receiver. Anyway, it's fourth down. And it looks like, in fact, they are going for it on fourth and seven. The ball is at the 32 yard line. And we have timeout on the field, 537 remaining in the half. Hawks 14, Bears 6. Remind you that this is the Michigan Network with Farm Bureau as one of our sponsors on the MHSAA Championship Network.
Joseph with the football on fourth down, and Sanders drops straight back to pass, looks for his big split end, Ken Ruppel out of the flat, overthrows him, but Ruppel is tackled as he was high in the air that time by Chad Burgess, number 89, and a flag flies, and Ken Ruppel stays on the ground there on the sideline. Ken Ruppel was uh, extremely vulnerable that time as he had stretched out and reached up, leaped up in the air, had his body completely extended trying to get uh, his hands on the pass there from uh, Ebon Sanders. And just at that instant, Chad Burgess laid a lick to him, and he was flagged for the uh, interference early in the official right on the uh, situation right there. It was right in front of him and flagged it. So good call by our officials. Pass Good football play really pass interference is the call first and 10 inside the 20 now at the 18 yard line so a big fourth down play and penalty and off left side Hurley the ball carrier gets a couple down to around the 15 yard line stacked up in there by a host of players including Jason Litchman and Scott Nichols. And Hurley continues to bang away in there. I think the uh, main weapon for the Bears, uh, as well as the Hawks today, has been the forward pass, but Hurley continues to pound at the middle, keeping the center of that uh, Hawk defense uh, at home in there and keeping a little pressure off of quarterback Yvonne Sanders. Second and seven Bears, two tight ends in a balanced line, eye formation. Option to the right side. Bowman's going to keep it, or Sanders, rather, is going to keep it. Gets it inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Gain of about two yards on the play. Gain of only two or three, but there was a great athletic play by Yvonne Sanders, turning what could have been a yard or two loss into plus yardage. Uh, just did a nice little move, went down the line, no hole at all, was hit immediately, spun away from a first tackler, and managed to fight his way forward for a couple. Jeremy Larson comes into the game, carrying the play from the sideline. He'll split wide to the right side. Big third down play right here. Third and six just inside the 15 at the 14 yard line. Ebon Sanders looking over the defense calling signals. Option coming to the right side. They hand off to the first man through Todd Fechner. And not a real good uh, selection at least in terms of it being successful because they're going to be well short of the first down and probably will come out with the field goal unit now as the ball is spotted on the right hash mark at about the 13 yard line which is going to make it around a 29 or 30 yard field goal. Looks like they're going to spot it at about the 29 on the right hash mark. Eric Frudenberg will come in to do the kicking. Here's the snap. It's a low in its place. It's kicked. It's up. It's got the distance, I believe, and it is good. Just barely over the crossbar. 333 remaining in the half. Hawks 14, Bears 19. We'll be back in a moment on this, the MHSAA Football Championship Network. Comes up with it. The second 
turnover of the day for Farmington Hills. I believe that's two apiece now. Puts it all even in turnovers, but a big break here in the closing minutes of the first half for the Bears of St. Joseph trailing 14 to nine. They now have it at the 36 yard line of Farmington Hill. Quarterback Yvonne Sanders calling the signals now. Here's the snap, handoff right side. Beckner, that didn't work any better that time than it did the last time. Well, and how quickly the complexion of a football game can change. It was only a couple of moments ago, 14-7. Farmington Hills Harrison seemed to have stopped St. Joe on a fourth down. The big penalty is called. St. Joe keeps it, manages a field goal, kicks off. Harrison fumbles it, and here's St. Joe in position to take the lead at the tail end of the first half. Field goal out over the football. Andy Rail and Baginski are the guards. Cronin and Robinson are the tackles. Two tight ends. High formation, here's the snap, back to pass, Saunders looking downfield, got all day to throw it, throws it up, it's complete at the 25, the 20, fumbles the football, and Farmington Hills will get it at the 10 yard line. Jeremy Larson had the pass that time, could not hold on, lost it at about the 15, fumbles it away, and they turn it right back over to Farmington Hills. Well, things are happening fast and furious <laughs> as the uh, Harrison Hawks took this kickoff uh, after the uh, field goal by St. Joe, and they fumbled the ball. Now St. Joe takes it offensively, gets it down to the 10-yard line, and uh, Jeremy Larson uh, lets go of the handle, and the Hawks end up with the ball again on their own 10. Two tight ends in a balanced line. Power eye formation to the right for Farmington Hills in their own territory at the 10-yard line. Millard Coleman under center calling signals. Hands off. Third man through. Running room out across the 15 to the 17-yard line goes Matt Conley, the 186-pound junior, brought down back there by Bruce Mortigal, number 61 of 201 House senior defenseman for St. Joseph. 138 remaining in the first half of play. Farmington Hills Hawks 14, St. Joseph Bears 9. Reminds you at halftime, our guest will be Dick Hishbaugh, the MHSA historian on tales of playoffs of old. And off right side, lots of running room again for Connolly, out across the 25 to the 30 yard line. First down yardage for Farmington Hills. They still have three timeouts remaining. Tom Thorne, the cornerback, on the stop defensively. And not to get too far away from the football game here because the half's not over yet, but folks who haven't heard Dick Kishpaw before, he's got a million stories to tell and he's worth hearing at halftime. Rick Berkey, of course, your halftime host once again. We'll be talking with Dick Hispa, and it should be interesting. Two tight ends in a balance line. First and 10 outside the 25 of the 27 yard line for the Harrison Hawks. Back to pass, rolling right, dumping it out on the flat complete to Tom Horton. Horton gets away from one man, still on his feet, almost loses the football and down at the 35 yard line. Tom Thorne again, the senior cornerback on the stop defensively. Clock continues to run down to 42, 40 seconds now. Harrison with Three timeouts remaining, still not using any of them. Millard Goldman calling signals up and down the line. Clock down to 29 seconds. Here's the snap. Goldman back to pass, going to the right side. Throws it out in the flat, intended that time for Tim Horton, number 23, just could not hold on. He was headed for the sideline, but the incomplete pass does stop the clock with 23 seconds. I'm a little surprised John Harrington has not used one of those timeouts. He has three of them left, and when you're throwing the football anyway, it's going to stop every time you're incomplete. And uh, I think maybe a couple of those are going to be squandered before this half ends. Well, I thought, you know, I, I don't like to be a Monday morning or an armchair quarterback or coach. But I thought he should have used one there when that pass was completed and it stayed in bounds because he had about 50 seconds on the clock and he let it get all the way down to 23. That's about a half a minute loss right there for not really. High formation in the backfield, wide receivers either side of the field. Quarterback under center calling signals, handoff right side. And it goes up the middle and it will be Matt Conley the ball carry and obviously Farmington Hills Harrison is going to use one of their timeouts, but it would seem also that they may very well be content to go in with this uh, 14 to 9 lead that they have here at halftime. Well, if I've got Mill Coleman, I don't think I'm going to be content with anything. I'm only, what, about 62 yards away from the end zone, and with Mill Coleman, that takes about seven, eight seconds. That's right, because he has had uh, a 70 yarder and a 72 yarder already today. 
Well, he's definitely got the strength in his arm to get the ball there, and uh, you're right, he's such a weapon, has such great presence uh, about him as far as throwing the ball. Seems very mature in that uh, probably would not put the ball up for grabs, probably would not throw it into the crowd, so you wonder why, uh, why be conservative here and run the ball and then call a timeout. I don't know. I'm glad you said it, Bill, because I was sure wondering it. But nevertheless, that's what's happened. First and 10, it will be for the Farmington Hills Harrison Hawks, as they have it in their own territory at the 38-yard line. Leading in the contest by five, 14-9, with 16 seconds remaining in the first half of play. I'd like to welcome our listeners tuned in on WCBY Shaporgan, the DOW in Dowagiak, MIC in Sandusky, KLA in Ludington, MAX in Grand Rapids, and HGR up in Houghton Lake. Coleman straight back to pass, getting a little pressure now, got a scramble, and he's tripped up in a big defensive play by Eric Freudenberg. A good job by Eric. All 195 pounds of him chasing down that little quarterback. He did a great job, and with that, the first half will end, ladies and gentlemen. And we will remind you that Denny's is one of our sponsors on this, the Michigan High School Athletic Association Football Championship Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Harrison Marching Band is directed by Mr. Mark Phillips. The assistant director is Scott Orwig, and the band's drill designer is Mike Randall. The Harrison Band begins its portion of tonight's show with soloists Joe Cislo and Tom Leeson and the exciting Latin jazz sounds of The Winds of Sonora.
the Harrison Band closes its portion of tonight's show by featuring trumpeters Tom Wieson and Tracy Chonsky as they take you to the Enchanted Kingdom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your St. Joseph Band announcer, Rim Baldwin. The St. Joseph High School Marching Band is directed by Robert W. Brown and Stephen L. Reed. The Bears Marching Band is... Very aroused, Dearborn Fortune team right now. And 
what's significant now, uh, equally significant in looking at the time left on the clock, just 25 seconds, as we take another look at this kick, which is, number one, just a perfect kick. Miller realizing that he's got to come out with the football. And watch this specialty team. Uh, well, if your kickoff team can do this all the time and keep that uh, opponent inside the 15, you're going to win some football games. Yes, indeed, and they are hitting hard. The Hawks decide to let the clock run out, and that'll end the first half of play with the tractors of Dearborn Forbeson on top, 7 to nothing. There you see a very happy Fordson team heading toward the locker room. But we have a whole lot of football. We have a whole lot of football left ahead of us. Joe Roberson, uh, seven to nothing, but the most exciting nothing to nothing ball game for two quarters I think I've ever seen. Well, both teams moved the ball, but both teams played good defense. That sounds inconsistent to say, Jim, but it's exactly what happened. Just a well-played football game. Well, we look forward to a very exciting second half, and we'll be back with all that action right after this. Jim Gaver along with Joe Roberson back for the second half from the Silver Dome of the Michigan High School Class A Championship football game. And a good one it is. And Joe, you can see just how close it is from those statistics. Yes, indeed. The difference in total yards is a little bit bigger than what I'd have guessed it would have been. Both teams have moved the ball, but it was a couple of really key passes in that last drive right before the halftime that put Dearborn Forts in where they are. Forts in ahead, seven to nothing, scoring from three yards out with just about 30 seconds left in the uh, first half of play for the only score of the football game and what you would think might be dreadfully boring was a very, very exciting game. And that one touchdown coming on an 80 yard drive in 15 plays that was just incredibly uh, well executed. The score uh, coming from Kevin Harris, who's been the real workhorse for Dearborn in this football game thus far, both in terms of his running and his passing, uh, pass receiving rather. Now a key issue here, Joe, in the uh, in that last uh, minute touchdown for Dearborn Fordson was that they had lost the toss at the beginning of the game, so they get the score and now get the football right back. Yes, and that gives them an opportunity to put a little distance between themselves and Harrison. It's still going to be tough, though. Harrison has not certainly given up big chunks of yardage until that last drive. There you see uh, number 20 for Dearborn uh, Fordson, Kevin Harris. He'll be deep to take uh, the kick along with John Janowitz, and that kick will come from that young man, Dave Blackmer. Blackmer will kick off for Harvey from Harrison. And we're ready for second half action. There's the kickoff. It'll come down on the far side to Harris. He'll take it at the 10. Across the 20, still on his feet. So the tractors of Dearborn Fordson will put the ball in play right there. Number 72 off the bottom of the pile uh, for Farmington Hills is Ben Chen. Well, this first drive could be very important, Jim. Harrison has to slow him down. If they don't, and they get something up on the board, it could be a long second half. Harrison only had one drive that got them into Dave Blackmer's range, and a 38-yard field goal by Blackmer went wide. We're at seven to nothing, just underway here in the second half of the Class A championship. This is Pugina. He'll get a few over the middle, across the 25, out to about the 28. Up off the bottom of the pile, Jamie Schaefer. Fortson has started to split a lot of people out and looks like they're in a passing formation, but they go up the middle for the four or five yards just as they did on that play. There you see the uh, Dearborn Fortson huddle. We'll set that offensive line for you. John Drummond and Mike Agamy at the uh, tackles. David Brooks and Bill Kiafalos at the guards. Doug Doss over the ball at center. He sets up full house backfield. Larry uh, Kachita calls the signals. 
Kopchia carries himself. Now that's a play that picked up good yardage for him a couple times in the first half. He fakes to both backs coming through the hole and then he follows him in. This time he gets about two. The ball spotted just across the 30 yard line. Third down and three to go. That's Dave Blackmer, number 33, uh, checking into the, uh, or Ron Stewart rather, into the uh, tractor's lineup. Full house backfield, two tight ends, third and three. Kopchia calls the signals. Oh, big hole. Potter Zeba, the big fullback, out over the 35 to the 40 yard line. A gain of about 10 on the play. Give him the first down. We'll take another look. That's the first down. Little oh, trap play. Very well blocked. They set their power all to the right, fake to the right, and then brought the fullback back over the left side. to live action now from the 40 yard line. Kopchia brings his team to the line. Power eye formation. Now he sets his other back. They go to a straight tee. This will be Harris. Harris the line. Looks like maybe he audible that. Saw a hole over on the left side and decided to run straight at it. Give him five on the play. Call it second and five. Kevin Harris. He's got the only score of this football game with 31 seconds left in the first half. He went in from the three yard line on the 15th play of an 80 yard drive. And that's the scoring, seven to nothing. The tractors of Dearborn and Fortson on top in this Class A Michigan High School State Championship. 33 is Ron Stewart. He'll try the left side, get a couple. Right back to the position they were in the last drive, or the last series of downs. Third down. third down, two or three to go. So far, their success ratio must be pretty good on those third down plays. They've had a third down situation uh, seven times and uh, converted it to successfully four of those seven times. So it's third and a long two. Kopcha with the long count. Second man through Harris. He's got the first down and more. He just needed a step or two, Jim, and he was gone to the races. Defensive end Steve Orsini reached out and grabbed him by the ankles, and uh, that makes the difference. Excellent blocking up front. Look at him go through that hole. That's the first down. You can see number 82, the defensive end, Orsini, coming from the top of your picture there. And that saved a big gain, possibly saved six points. Ball in Farmington Hills Harrison territory just outside the 40 yard line. Nothing there. Harrison in the line. Dave Blackmer, the linebacker, leads the charge. Also in there, uh, Smigilski. And Jerry Eisen, uh, the 5'10, 195 pound junior tackle. Seven fifty left in uh, the third quarter of this Class A championship game. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. Ball possession is really becoming the style for Fortson right now. Four and a half minutes control the ball this half. From the power eye. Fake bootleg to the right. Oh. Kopchia will keep it and just gets tripped up. Uh, it looked to me, Jim, like maybe he read his block wrong. He had a man out in front of him, and they didn't coordinate the block and the run. But if they had, he had a lot of room to run. As you can see there, he comes up limping just a little bit, but he appears to be okay. Well, are we going to see our first pass of the third quarter? Third and long. This would be the place for it. They load things to the left. They've done this before, then pitch to Harris. Not this time. They want to go up with it. Overthrows his intended receiver, Abraham uh, Beydoun, at the 26-yard line. That'll set up a fourth down situation and uh, undoubtedly bring on Richard Brooks. He'll kick the football away. I will check that. It will bring on Brooks. It will bring on David Geis, the uh, punter. Nice high kick. 
Take him down at the 15. Take a Dearborn bounce. Get down at the 12-yard line. And so the Hawks of Farmington Hills Harrison trailing 7-0 in this football game will have their first possession of the second half. Ball is down on the 12 yard line. Well, you're going to start from a hole. It's hard to use your full offense when you're down that close to the goal line. Ken Kish brings his team to the line in the I formation. Pitch to his deep man, Miller. Miller, the super sophomore, one of only two sophomores starting for anybody on this uh, Saturday uh, of uh, Michigan High School Athletic Association uh, Championship football. Dearborn has really effectively cut off his outside moves. He has picked up like he did then, three, four yards a couple of times, but we've never seen the time where he looked like he was in danger of breaking the big one. He had 83 yards in last week's uh, semifinal game against uh, Milford, although there wasn't much to run with uh, in all the mud and rain. Miller again tries to get outside and it's not there. We'll set that Fordson defense for you. Mark Brown and Mario Brunetti are at the ends. Greg Koleski and uh, John Cascardo are at the tackles. Rich Serini in at the middle guard. Bill Kiafalos and Ron Stewart uh, are the linebackers. John Drummond also in and out of that defensive line. Hassan Saad and Hassan Jaffer are the cornerbacks. Laricio uh, Pugina is the rover, and Kevin Harris is at safety for the tractors of Dearborn Forts and on defense. Third and two for the Hawks. Fake, they want to go up with it. They do, and it's in and out of the hands of number 25, Jim Adams. Now that's very painful, Jim. They're going to have to punt a ball away again and bring that Farmington Hills defense back out, and they have already played six minutes. This is kind of a surprising pass for a third and two situation. Uh, uh, it's not necessarily surprising that they pass, but the kind of pass they threw, you can see a lot of room inside, a little quick pass over the middle. Would have had the first down. They took the gamble and lost. And so John Miller will have to punt the football away from his 10 yard line. A low end over end kick will come down to the 45. We'll have a run back. This is Harris, looks outside. Beautiful defensive play. Number 18, Flynn Baker, and he was the only uh, safety that uh, Farmington Hills Harrison had on that play, or Harris would have had some room. Yes, and it looked like a blocker ran right by and had a shot at him, too. So good field position for the Trackers as their defense shuts the Hawks down after four plays. First and 10 for Dearborn Fordson at their own 49 yard line. They come up in the power eye formation. Kopchia calls his signals. He'll throw on first down over the middle. Intercepted. That's John Miller up the sideline. He gets across midfield. There is a flag on the play, however. The flag was thrown in the offensive backfield where you would normally see a, a holding penalty on a pass play. And that's exactly what it is. It'll be declined, and so the Hawks of Farmington Hills get the first real big break of the football game. He had his man open and just overthrows him, as you can see here, Jim. And it's a very fine reception on the interception. Just on his finger trips. This is the sophomore that we've been talking about, John Miller. So far, he's been more impressive defensively than offensively. So the Hawks now in tractor territory at the 49-yard line. And Kish will go to the air. Flares it out to Miller, and he drops the football. Looked like an easier catch in his interception. They flooded that side, sent two men deep and ran Miller in behind him, and he was open. And it uh, seems that that's what they're going to have to do if they're going to move this football, is get Miller out with some running room and let him do some uh, open field running. 
so far Fordston has been able to hold their running game to a minimum. Kish back to throw again. Play action over the middle. Complete. That's Jamie Schaefer at the 30-yard line of the Tractors. And that play wasn't badly defended against either, Jim. He didn't have much room to get the ball in and took a very clean shot. We'll take another look. Very difficult ball to hold on to.
for four offensive plays, two of which resulted in interception. Bowman back to pass, getting pressure, throws it up complete inside the 30 at the uh, 27 or 28 yard line, completed out there to Steveville, his fine junior flanker back. Well, Coleman just continues to be impressive as uh, he steps back to pass and just seems to be able to spot those receivers, knows when they're going to make their cuts and delivers the ball right on the money. You can't ask for much more than uh, what he's given us tonight. Boy, and he's shifty back there as well. St. Joe's trying to put the pressure on and Mill Coleman just knows which way to sidestep to avoid the rush. Armington Hills with 13 first downs in the contest now as compared with a total of nine for St. Joseph. Pitch back going right side Connolly the ball carrier gets up around the 25 yard line stacked up over there by host of maize and blue jerseys getting up off the bottom of the pile Bob Fredrickson the 220 pound senior just no quit at all in uh, the St. Joseph Bears three or four players hustling over there to make the stop and uh, they may be trailing by 21 points but I don't think they've given up hope yet. Well I've coached against uh, Ike Millen camps. Uh, St. Joe Bears and you hit it right on the head. They will always come to rock your socks Mark and uh, they will never quit on you. Second down eight yards to go for the first down the ball on the 25 yard line Farmington Hills with control of the game and the football at this moment. Handoff left side Conley again running room inside the 20 down to the 15 and just barely tripped up at the last moment by Rick Wales making a good stop on the ball carrier because Conley had up ahead of steam and had his sights set on that big blue and white end zone but was stopped at the 15 another first down for Farmington Hills. Well Rick Wales you're right just uh, by a shoelace as uh, Matt Conley had up ahead of steam and was leaning well forward out over his uh, knees and his feet he had uh, visions of that touchdown uh, blue end zone and he was on his way had it not been for uh, Rick Wales. Hawks break out of it now. Power eye formation to the left, two tight ends in a balanced line. Man in motion going away is Tim Horton. Here's the snap, handoff. Conley being chased back there and hit immediately by Eric Freudenberg. Freudenberg, rather. And uh, makes a good stop defensively, holding him for no gain. It'll be second and 10 from the 15 yard line. Freudenberg playing a real good game defensively for St. Joe. He has been there play after play after play. Eric Freudenberg, 6'1", 195 pounds and a senior. Plays a little bigger than that. Wide to the left side comes Chad Burgess. Wide right is Steve Hill. Eye formation in the backfield. Now Hill in motion coming this way. Coleman under center calling signals back to pass. Looking out the flats. Got a man. It's complete to Hill. He's at the 10, the 5, and blasted at the 5-yard line. Coming up with a good stop there. Number 86, Ken Rupel, also number 82, Rob Fredrickson on the stop defensively. And it'll be first and goal for Farmington Hills at the four-yard line. I don't know about you gentlemen, but after four football games in one day, my throat is saying, give me a break. <laughs> been a long day, but been some great football oh, here at the been, Silverdome. It's been super. Two tight ends, the balance line. Power eye left as Coleman looks over the defense, calls the signal. First and goal at the four yard line. Handoff, Conley going through left, battling his way into the end zone, I believe. Touchdown, Farmington Hills, Harrison Hawks. Put it in again, extend their lead 36 to nine now. And will more than likely do the, nope, they're coming out with a tee, so they're gonna kick this one and make it a 28.4 touchdown lead with 8.51 remaining in the game. An awful tall order for anyone, let alone this St. Joseph Bear team. Well, and it's nice to see Matt Connolly get the touchdown. He's been running hard all night long, and good to see him get one on the ground. Kick is up and good with 8.57 remaining in the contest. Hawks 37, Bears 9. We'll be back in one moment on this, the MHSAA Championship Football Network.
Bob McDonald just made a jarring tackle of the return man on this kickoff following the touchdown and extra point. And the St. Joseph Bears will start now on their own 17 18 yard line. Matt Conley on the day, 20 carries, 93 yards, and a touchdown. Good afternoon for that young man. High formation in the backfield, two tight ends in a balanced line. Hand off right side, we got a new quarterback in the game, Greg Shell, six foot, 156 pound senior, running things right now. Not a real good day for Ebon Sanders, at least in the second half. Threw up a few interceptions. His teammates coming over to the bench, shaking his hand, saying, hey, bud, not your fault. Jeremy Larson goes wide to the right side. Ken Rupel wide left. Eye formation in the backfield. Here's the snap. Back to pass. Rolling right shell. Looking out in the flat. Got a man open complete at the 25 yard line. Out to the 27 yard line. 7.55 remaining in this football game. It was 14 to 9 at halftime, and suddenly. Farmington Hills explodes after two big interceptions and good field position and now lead it 37 to 9. Well, they played just about as well as you can play here in the second half. 23 points for Farmington Hills Harrison. They picked off a couple of balls, run the great offense. Third down, two yards to go for the first down. St. Joseph with the football option to the right side. First man through, Todd Fechner, the 187 pound senior. Gets first down yardage out to the 29 yard line and keeps the drive alive. Not that sure. We've seen so many ball games today, John, but uh, has Harrison punted in this ball game at all? I'm not sure if Harrison has punted or not in this ball game. I know that was the first first down of the second half. Harrison has had to punt the ball one time all day. Back to pass St. Joe, all the way down the field. Greg Shell throws it up and overthrown out of bounds intended for Jeremy Larson. Greg Shell's got a pretty good arm there too. It wasn't uh, online, but he sure got enough under, he got it out there far enough. About 45 yards in the air that time by the senior. Nice touch by Ike Mullenkamp getting Greg Shell in the ball game here. Ebon Sanders, the junior, his quarterback all season long, and Greg Shell, a senior who's worked hard, and he's going to get a chance to play here in the Silver Dome. And Ebon Sanders uh, sitting on the sidelines, and right next to him, Scott Hurley, the senior uh, back that has been the uh, powerhouse runner for the Bears, and uh, they're consoling each other. Played an excellent ball game, had an excellent season, but a little bit out of this one. Gary Layton, the sophomore, gets the call going left. Gets maybe a yard on the play out to around the 30 yard line, and that's about it. Scott Nichols, Jeff Skinner, Dale Katz, a host of Harrison uh, Hawks over there bring him down. Clock ticking away down at 633 now. The reason I asked about that punt a minute ago, uh, John, is uh, the uh, punter that we have on our stat sheet is Millard Coleman, and that's about the only thing I didn't see him do today. Yeah. So <laughs> he's done it all. That's about right. Greg Shell calling the signals back to pass, rolling out to the right, looking downfield. Got a man open. It's going up and incomplete again, intended for Jeremy Larson. And again, Greg Shell showed a good arm right there, but uh, just falls incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down now and an obvious punting situation for St. Joseph. And this side of the field has been pretty quiet here in the second half of play. Uh, they had a good contingent of fans coming over from the St. Joseph area, and they're making all kinds of noise in the first half, but not a whole lot to cheer about here in half number two. Yeah, they have great football fans down there in St. Joe, and Ike Mullenkamp's been in the playoffs before. He's going to be there again, and uh, they'll get their chance, and they'll win here in the Dome one of these days. Whew. Oh, my. Oh, flag on roughing the punter, but what a poop. Back to the 17-yard line, and a flag there as well. Still battling for an out of bounds. We're going to get a roughing. The kicker call will be the first penalty thrown. The second one, I'm not sure. About 55 yards on that punt. 50 yards on the punt. Wow. By Gary Layton. He really got his foot into that one. And he's just a sophomore. 
Well, we'll sort out the penalties here and see what happens. Now, Coach, is that an automatic first down on the roughing? I believe it is, yes. And, uh, of course, it's 15 yards, but we got a clip to go along with it. we got all kinds of things going on here. A lot of options now by our referee uh, being explained to uh, the St. Joe Bears, but I believe they're going to end up keeping the ball. John, since we have just a minute here, will they back it up and uh, start things all over again? I think I can speak for Bill and I both. Uh, been a great day here. At uh, Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor for the state championship basketball network that we put together for the Michigan High School Athletic Association. So we're looking forward to that as well. Well, it's all been sorted out. It's first and 10 St. Joseph. In their own territory now at the 46 yard line. Back to pass Shell, looking downfield. Throws up a long one, and it falls incomplete, this time intended for Kenny Rupel. And uh, Greg's been throwing up those bombs. Uh, he probably ought to back up just a little bit and try to hit, get some shorter yards, get a little confidence, <laughs> and move the football. Well, he's got uh, a great arm as he has uncorked some long ones, and uh, they are uh, beautiful spirals, as you said, John. They haven't connected as of yet, but impressive as he throws the ball. Second and 10, St. Joe Bears with the football, trailing 37 9, 547 remaining in the contest. Shell back to pass again, and it's blasted. He was going to throw a screen out to the right side, but had absolutely no time to set up. Busting through there, number 42, Scott Nichols, the 5'10 senior, making a vicious hit. On the quarterback. I was going to say, did somebody get the number of that truck? I couldn't pick up who it was, but it's Scott Nichols from his linebacker spot, and a good job by Greg Shell just to avoid fumbling the football. I thought it may have been uh, Joe George, number 35, but uh, nonetheless, it was a vicious hit. Third and long now. Shell throwing it up over the middle, complete at the midfield stripe to Kenny Ruppel. The fine split end for St. Joseph, and he's getting up rather slowly, but they'll be short of first down yardage at midfield, and we'll see what Ike Mullenkamp uh, decides to do here, whether or not he will, in fact, punt it away. Remains to be seen. No, they are in punt formation. No, they're not. So they're going to go for it. Fourth and six at the 50-yard line. Shell on the option going right now throws it up over the middle and tapped away at the last moment by Byron Waldron. Almost at his third interception of the day. I was going to say, guess who had his hand on that ball once again from that defensive back position? His hands are like glue out there. Just Milk. I was going to say, Mill Coleman's had a great day for Farmington Harrison, but if I'm a newspaper writer and i got to put a headline together, I'm not sure Brian Waldron isn't the guy I stick up there right now. What a day he's had. Like you said, if there's any way possible, whether he knows it or not, for him to get one more score, he gets another record on the day. New quarterback in is Craig Murray. Farmington Hills Harrison with the football. Craig Murray running the offense now. Joe George, the ball carrier, the 5'10 junior, picks up about eight yards on the play. It'll be second and two. Well, we're beginning to see a lot of new faces now. I'm sure there's some new linemen up uh, in there on both sides that we haven't picked up yet. Apologize to folks for that. It'll take us a couple minutes to sort them out here. Hand off on the right side. Joe George, again the ball carrier. First down yardage inside the 40, down around the 36-yard line. Clock down to 3.50 now, remaining in this football game. 37-9, Farmington Hills Harrison leading St. Joe. It hasn't been that much of a runaway all evening, however. It was only 14-9 at halftime. Some big turnovers in the second half by St. Joe and some fine offensive uh, showings by the Hawks that put them in command of this game. Craig Murray drops back and is hammered back there, loses a couple on the play. Mike Gation getting in there, number 88, with some other maize and blue jerseys. 
Well, one of the things you'll often see when you see new players in the football game that time is Craig Murray lost the handle on the snap from center. Ball kind of shot up in the air. He had to retrieve it, fumbled it again, picked it up, and by the time he got control, there was the defense. Here's the snap. Joe George, the junior, gets the call off the right side. Good running room, battles his way almost down to first down yardage around the 22. And uh, Coach Mullenkamp freely substituting now defensively on that St. Joseph team as the offense makes several substitutions as well. Third and short at the 27 yard line for Farmington Hills Harrison as they will be state champions class B style here. Here's the snap and off left side up the middle. And I believe he gets first down yardage inside the 25 at the 24 yard line. 17 first downs on the evening for Farmington Hills Harrison. Clock down to 219 and stop for a moment while they move the chains now remaining in this football game. So the state champions will be Schoolcraft, Traverse City, Detroit DeForest, and now Farmington Hills Harrison. Pitch back going around the right side. Scott Nichols, the ball carrier, gets driven out of bounds over there around the 17 yard line by a host of Mason Blue. Stopped that time by Paul Heaps, sophomore out of his linebacker spot. Tackle on the play before that, made by Neil Parker. Well, defensively, I see Craig Blasco in there, Brian Maxson, Colin Cronin. A lot of substitutes now for the Bears. Second down, three yards to go for the first down. Murray pitches it back. A little bit of running room around the left side. A foot race to the corner, tripped up at the last moment. Was number 42, Scott Nichols, the senior running back, gets it down for first and goal. They'll spot it at the seven yard line, but a good defensive effort that time. By Ed Yearington, a 5'8", 150 pound junior, and away from the football that time, and the officials didn't make a call. Dan Justice is lucky that Justice wasn't served in his cases. He simply tackled a St. Joseph player trying to make a block. 107 remaining. The uh, Farmington Hills crowd getting a little fired up over there on that side. Scott Nichols gets the call, and he'll go into the end zone off the right side. Touchdown, Scott Nichols and Farmington Hills. Return for St. Joseph comes back out to around the 28 or 9 yard line, but there is a flag on the return, and we'll see what that's all about as the referees discuss it around the 30 yard line. Preliminary indication, personal foul, and it's going against Farmington Hills Harrison. No, going against St. Joseph. He pointed that way, though, didn't he? I thought he did too, uh, John, and then uh, he marks it off the other way. Been a long day for the Zebras, too. Yeah. <laughs> They only did one game. That's exactly right. <laughs> of course, they're running back and forth. We're kind of stable here. Yeah, this one, right. they have covered some ground, haven't they? <laughs> Boy, they sure have. They've been up and down that field. 33 ticks left on the clock. The last play, probably, of this, the Class B state championship game, which will go to Farmington Hills Harrison. And while we were away earlier there, John Harrington got the LT trick with the bucket of ice on his head. And, uh, and the crowd went wild about that. Clock just ticking away right now, and remind you again to stay tuned for Rick Berkey, uh, Bill Brandon, and Mark Crawford for our post-game show with all the statistics and a 
super big thank you to all of those that made this possible today. Last play of the ball game, the seven is coming wild for St. Joe, and it's finally tackled up around midfield. Ball running out to you has been our starter, John Kalab, our statistician. Clearly, Swiggles Ball has been our in-house engineer here. The Belgian Lance and Jim Carroll back in the studio can take the ball out to go for us. With that, I'll say goodbye for the final time today and remind you once again, this is the Michigan High School Athletic Association Championship Football Network. Ladies and gentlemen, before the presentation of the championship trophy, let's acknowledge these two fine teams for their achievements this year and their play this evening. Teams line up for the award ceremony, please. Along the 45 yard line. At this time, we direct your attention to the field where Mr. Robert Grimes, principal at Penfield High School in Battle Creek and a member of the MHSAA Representative Council, will make the trophy presentation to the Class B runner-up, the Bears of St. Joseph. Accepting the runner-up trophy, Coach Ike Mullenkamp. And now, Mr. Grimes will present the Class B Championship Trophy to the Hawks of Farmington Harrison, accepting the Championship Trophy, Coach John Harrington.